Googling, you're going to spoil things. <laughs> Hello and welcome. This is 92 Bits Gamers Podcast. I am your host, Mark, from YouTube channel Modern Tech, and I'm with my co-host, Lewis. Today, we have some news on the Activision Blizzard deal that's kind of going through now, potentially. Uh, there's some new exciting news with Dead by Daylight. There is Tears of the Kingdom out, and there's a few other subjects that come across. So we're going to get into them right now. Right. Well, it's going to have to be said now. Dead by Daylight. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Did you see it when you in your little Google? Did you find any spoilers then? Lewis? No, I, 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 I. You didn't let me. You didn't let me look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've left it. Well, it's something incredible, and I've just seen it. Our favorite person in the whole world is going into Dead by Daylight. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> bringing Cage to Dead by Daylight. Exactly. When's it coming out? I've just said it. 5th of July, Nicolas Cage is going to be one of the guys in Dead by Daylight. I don't know where that fits in. I, it seems so random gonna, because Freddy Krueger. He's Kruger, not going to be a killer scream. or something. He'll be one of the killers, yeah, but it's just the fact that it's just everyone's from like a franchise, but this one's just Nicolas Cage. There's no like... Just, just Nick Cage nothing else himself. to it. Yeah. Wow. Could you imagine? I, I wanted to play it. I want to play as a uh, Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is playing yes. himself in Dead by Daylight, so it's not like a random character. That's what I mean. It's just it's himself, just Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's got like any gruesome kills, like rips the face off. Oh, that'll be the best. <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> he just turns up as a. <laughs> the good guys should get like John Travolta. <laughs> Oh well, that's 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 fascinating. I mean, he's just me, played I mean, Dracula, so does it? Is he going to be like the Dracula character? Well, I've seen the trailer, and the trailer walks in. He does look kind of like Dracula, Dracula, <laughs> Dracula like, but it's um, it's not. It's just Nicolas Cage. It's just All him. Right. It's him in a, in a role, a weird, is it? A bit weird, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the guy is weird Nick. anyway. I mean, he has snakes as pets. It, yeah, he's um if you I don't know if you've I, ever I looked Nicolas him up. Cage. I don't know if you've ever looked him up, but he has he's got some weird habits. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I've not looked I've not really looked him up specifically. I don't actually know much about him his personal life off film. Like I only know him from movies and stuff. But in movies, I love his variety. Obviously, he goes from something really serious and good and which is like a you know, a critically high film. It's really good. And he's just in some absolute garbage bargain bin <laughs> film that you'd find in Blockbuster somewhere. <laughs> you know, the one where they had that big bins where it's just there. videos yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for sale. Yeah, they can't get rid of. <laughs> uh, if you Googled like you Google him Nicolas now Cage. Googled Nicolas Cage movies, you, you're right, you'd get some absolute fantastic films like Aircon and, is it, and Lord of War. Um... And then you just get the naff ones. Like, what was that one he was in the other year? Taekwondo or some rubbish like that. I've not seen it, but I did watch, uh, I think it was like two years ago. I think it was like around the start of lockdown. He was in a film called Willy's Wonderland. And I advise you to watch it. It's oh, that's one of the so good, good ones, isn't it? It's so bad. Well, that's the thing. It's so bad, but it's good. It's He says one word throughout the whole film, and that's right at the end. And I can't remember what it is. It's like one line. <laughs> um, but he's, he's just a cleaner. He goes into like um, this. He's a cleaner, and for some reason, he gets lured into doing. Sorry, no, he's a trucker, and he gets lured into kind of doing a cleaning job for this old kind of like. It's like a fee, not like a theme park, but like, do you know when McDonald's have like play areas? And oh, stuff like I that? get it. it and they have I, I know parties. about this. It, it's basically a game slash Mickey take of that game that all the kids were playing, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's like a, it's some yes, with, that, with all it? the animal uh, animatronics. Yeah, isn't it? Some, isn't um, it a film basically that? Yeah. But it's basically Nicolas Cage fighting them 1v1 <laughs> at random different occasions with a bunch of random teenagers that just randomly get killed here and there. It's just <laughs> it's just very, very random and very pointless. And he doesn't say a single word. He just goes in, 
cleans up and kicks ass. That's all he needs to do. Yeah, he's in the old Nick Cage. He's in that one with Pedro Pascal, isn't he? Recently, with uh, that's on. I've not seen that yet. I want to watch. Is it only it. on Apple TV? Is that why I've not seen it anywhere? Is it an Apple TV special? I don't know. Um, I thought it was on Netflix, to be honest, but I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'll have to. I'll have to look into it. That's anyway, supposed I think to be we should move good. on from the Nicolas Cage podcast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> 92 bit gamers. Oh, gosh. Nicolas Cage gamers. It's on Prime <laughs> Video. Cage game. There you go. It's, it's <laughs> bad daylight. Oh, well. But anyway, um, let's get on to Zelda because that seems to be the biggest game at the moment. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Has obviously just come out, and I've got some numbers here somewhere written down. It's been it's one been of the, the best games to come out this year from the reviews and ratings. Yeah, yeah from the in America, it sold over ten million copies in the first three days, which is the fastest selling Zelda game ever. Huh. That's which massive, isn't it? <laughs> is pretty big, isn't I mean, it? Yeah. <laughs> recently, when you look at the games that have come out as well, you had, let's say, in the last few weeks, the games haven't had the best receiving onto consoles have they really they do you reckon that plays a part in it because all these a lot of other games that are coming out which have been quite anticipated on different consoles were not very have good been <laughs> kind of a letdown yeah Where, with quick yeah i think games i think they were newer games over the last couple of months have come out and they've not been i don't want to say they've not been finished but they've not been up to scratch they haven't been what everyone was expecting and then Nintendo brought out Tears of the Kingdom, which we've anticipated for a good few years now because it was announced a couple of years ago. Um, and it seems to have smashed everything that's come out over the last few weeks. I know it's only sure. it's only been out a week, but to say that it's got high reviews, high ratings, and everybody loves it only after a week, it's kind of a, it's a success in itself, really, isn't it? It's one of them, isn't it? So obviously there's you know, games which are coming out a bit different, trying to take a risk and stuff. And it's not really working with people, but then they've got Nintendo with the good old reliable. They know what they're getting. They know it's essentially Breath of the Wild 2 and they love Breath of the Wild 1. And <laughs> this much, is what they're yeah. getting. Friends of mine yeah. have already got the game and they said that they've not put it down since they bought it. They said like they, they took a bit of time off work to play it because they wanted to play it. And they've, they've they've just not put it down, and I'm a bit jealous that I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> are, you, are you getting uh, it? Soon, I will then? be getting it. Yeah, probably either this weekend or next weekend. I'll get it. To uh, I'll have a few hours on it, and maybe even mention it in the next episode. To tell you exactly what it's like. Yeah, I'd like to hear what it's like compared to the first one because I've got into well. I've got the first one, as you know, and I'm not a massive fan. <laughs> um, just because you prefer... Mal always quotes me. You prefer games that yeah, just Mal always tells quotes. you where, you, where you're going to go. This doesn't tell you where you're going to go. You have to work it out yourself. Yeah. I said it to one of our friends, Malachi, who... Um, it, it does not like the fact that I said Genshin Impact was better. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Um, that, that, that was a hot take there, but... I think for me, it's yeah, it's because it's too, it's too open. I need, I need to know where I'm going. It's like right, this is my mission. This is where I'm going. I'm following the cursor. I need to go there, but I don't. I get there. I'm on a tower with some random dudes with a pair of binoculars. And it's like ah, oh, there's four towers. I'm like cool. Like and it's like, am I supposed to go to him? So I go to one of them, and it's like it takes me forever to get there. I'm like, this can't be the right way because it's taking me too long to get here. And then I get there, I do this like crappy little dungeon. And I'm like, well, that wasn't really satisfying or rewarding. It just felt like tedious and boring. Um, but that's that's I just mean, me. There's... I'm going to get a load of hate now anyway. People are clicking off now. Oh, he doesn't like Zelda. Get out of here. No, no. It's, <laughs> I'm sure you played other Zelda games, though, didn't you? Like, did you ever play Twilight Princess on the Wii or the Wii U? No. I'm not a Zelda kind of guy, no, to be honest. Enough. I've never... Never gotten far in the Zeldas. Like, I want to try Breath of the Wild because everyone keeps absolutely going I mean, on about it. It is different to, to previous Zelda games. Like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are, are a bit different to previous Zelda games where the previous ones did sort of have a sort of linear track to follow where this one is just... You get you open world and there's open world like... 
Final Fantasy 15, where it is open world, where but you know where you're going for the next. You've part. got tasks to go to. You've got people where, to speak and to, and you know where they yeah, are. Then yeah, then there's open world like Breath of the Wild, where you basically you have to open the map yourself and go right. I'm going to go there to see what's over there, or I can see that the I've never been to this part of the map. Let's go over there and see see what's over there. Yeah, I suppose like. I know I don't normally like games like that, but obviously Elden Ring was a bit like that. And that did put me off Elden Ring a little bit. I obviously I enjoy play, playing Elden Ring and I didn't like it. But part of me really prefers Dark Souls 3 just because it's like, you know, you're getting into an area and you need to get to the end of this area. Whereas Elden Ring is like, right, which area are you going to? There's about seven over here. You can choose which one you want to go to. And then you have to get a random artifact from somewhere to like activate an elevator somewhere. And it's random. There's just no explanation I mean, to I, it whatsoever, really. I like playing the games, but I've never finished any of them. And I thought Elden Ring would be one of them ones that I would finish because I was enjoying it more I've than not the others. That. Yeah. But I got to the same... I started a second time with a similar character, but because I understood the mechanics a bit more because I played it one like once already i sped my my game time up quite a bit i got to the same bit and i just thought what am i doing i said <laughs> so i got I, I gave up again <laughs> and uh what did i turn on I, I turned something else on i think i need to get my xbox on and we need to have a playthrough on dark souls 3 or <laughs> you need to get it on pc <laughs> whatever, whatever it's cheapest on <laughs> i've actually got it on xbox to be fair oh yeah i don't know if you own the game or not yeah um, I, i've got it on xbox first i think i've got if i had a look through my games on my xbox i think i've got the remastered dark souls dark souls i got that on xbox as well dark actually. souls i find that solid though too. sorry go on and I, I have a steel case of Dark Souls 3, but I don't know if I still own the game. <laughs> I'll have to have a look around. <laughs> well, that's very random. What, how would you, have, would you have traded in the game without I, I have no idea. the case? No, it's, I have a steel case for Dark Souls 3, and it might have just been in the days where I, I picked like steel cases, games up for cheap. And I'm, I'm sure I've turned it on and played it. There's a beginning of the game, you go a bit further in and then you end up with a massive hall with like a dining table and some statue tells you you your mission. Is that right? <laughs> right at the beginning. Yeah, that's kind of like every Dark Souls so that's, <laughs> that's um what they call Firelink Shrine. That's what in Elden Ring the round table was basically. Do you have one in every Yeah, but it was Dark it was game. more that you actually you fought something, like you fought a knight in like open area rather than and then you beat the knight, you went through to some door, and you ended up in a, like what basically an underground tomb with a big statue, and then the statue started talking to you. And I was just like, oh, the statue's talking to me. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to play it. You'll enjoy it if we play it together, I reckon. All right. um, yeah. Speaking of Zelda, though, I know we're kind of off just somehow into Dark Souls. I can't remember how that happened. <laughs> but speaking of Zelda... Midlight launches, that seems to have kind of become a thing again with Zelda. Why do people bother doing midnight launches these days? Like, do you care for midnight launches? I know you work so I yeah, for game. It, it depending on what night it was. I I really like working the midnight launches when I used to work there. Um and the it's pro, it's you get some proper good fans of the games that turn up because they want it that night. Um, but you did see it start to die out a little bit, the midnight launches, because you just get them nowadays. Most of the time, if you order it from a cert from certain shops online, you get it the day before. The postman will just bring it to you. Um, yeah. And with the midnight launches, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of stores don't want to stay open that late anymore for maybe a handful of one game one game for a <laughs> handful of customers that like might turn 15 up. people yeah i mean the call of duty and the fifa midnight launches were always busy because you got every man and his dog turning up for them ones <laughs> but none of the staff wanted to work them and i won't go into why we didn't like working them but it's it was basically the sort of people that turned up sometimes for them sort of games 
Um, but I remember doing a Fallout 4 Midnight launch when Fallout 4 was released all them years ago. Um, it was a good laugh. We redecorated the store. People came in costume. It was, it was really good and really fun. But you're right. It was only 10, 20 people that turned up for the game. And for us to shut the store, redecorate before the timing, before like midnight, and then sell all the copies and say it, it wasn't becoming worth doing it. And it was only worth doing yeah. it for the big games. And then even then they, they started to stop doing that. But you said that it's coming back. It might have just been a special occasion or I, I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame to a degree, but like, I've seen a few posts and like Facebook groups and stuff where people have been kind of like posting pictures, like where they're playing games outside the shop for the midnight launch. And these pictures were posted like six p.m. I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, they've obviously just been sat there super early. But it's I, I can see to a degree it's going to be nice having like you know, being surrounded by people who are anticipating the same thing. It's, it's, something to, it's something to, it's a very social thing <clears throat> where you, even though you are stood in a queue for it for a good few hours, you're chatting to the people who are sat with you, stood with you about your favourite games, your favourite part of the games that you're waiting for, what you're expecting from the game that you're queuing up for. It's one of them, like, everyone there is, you would think, in the same sort of circle as you are, who play the same sort of games that you do. I've only ever been to one, and it's kind of like a success story for me, really. Is this um, your Call of Duty one? It was, yeah, it was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and I was, what, how old was I at the time? I think not. I was 16. Not old enough to play Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, I think I was 16, maybe 17. So obviously the game's an 18. I didn't have ID. So I went into Asda in Chafford Park, and it was a massive Asda. And there was a queue going all the way from upstairs down, like the escalators and stuff. Like the escalators were turned off, and there was like a queue going all the way down. And I was stood in that queue um, with Joel, and it took it just took ages. And then there was a noise on the what's they called it like a tannoy and they were like make sure you have your ids at the ready and stuff i was like oh no i don't have id <laughs> <laughs> so we went across the road to the traffic center again but in in asda there must have been about i'm going to say 150 people that's obviously quite a lot for one game and i went across the road to game and there was about 70 people i'd say which was obviously less and it was great because there was like people dressed up and there's guys dressed up in like army gear and stuff like that. And they did a raffle. So they're giving everyone a free raffle ticket when they went in. And then as I was just queuing up, some guy came over to me and was like, oh, is this your number? I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, you just, you just uh, come with me for a second. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I was really curious. I was thinking like, what, what's going on now? And he went, you've won the raffle, by the way, but I didn't want to tell you because the guy next to you looked kind of shady. <laughs> Joel. Like, oh, right, cheers. <laughs> no, it was another guy. Um, <laughs> so I won the raffle and I won an Xbox 360 Elite, which is uh, pretty pretty impressive. Uh, it's like my, that's like my success story, to be fair. Yeah. I'd never won anything before and I never have and I never will again, probably. I mean, it's just... I was at the... Phenomenal. I was at the GTA V uh Midnight launch. <laughs> to get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it was it was on three sixty at first, wasn't it? So it was it was that's how far back it was. Um Gosh, I remember yeah. how busy that was. And what other one was I at? Where did I get fed? Oh, I was at a midnight launch for the Elder Scrolls Online when that first got released. That had a midnight launch. Which surprised did me. You say where did I get fed? Yeah. I'm gonna go into it now. So at the, at the time, I, I didn't work for game, but I, just, I knew the staff in the store. So we were queuing up, waiting for um, from, for them to let us in and start like buying stuff. And it must have been about 10 past 10, half 10 uh, at night while the staff was setting up the store. Next thing I know, one of the staff comes out and they go, oh, Lewis, what are you doing here? And I said, like, what do you think I'm doing here? I'm coming to get this. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. Just chilling. Just chilling, yeah. And they said, oh, I'm going to KFC. Do you want anything? I was like, 
uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm not leaving the queue. He went, oh, no worries. I'll come back with something for you. Guy wanders off. Ten minutes later, comes back. I expected just like, you know, like just a burger or, you know, something small. He's come back with a full meal from KFC for me. Drink, yeah, fries, nice. bucket of chicken. <laughs> like he said, he said, you're still going to be here. He's like, you're still going to be here for about an hour, Lewis. So get this down here. So I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, I will. I can imagine how envious everyone in the queue is exactly. staring at you. It was like evil eyes. Oh, yeah. And I'm there going, oh, yeah, chicken. <laughs> Scranning chicken. No, but it was all right. I'm a bit full now. I'll save it for later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good night, so, because stuff like that happens. Like, obviously, I used to work midnight lunches, and you get all sorts of people coming in. Like, I was, I went to, when Mass Effect Andromeda came out, there was a midnight launch for that. It wasn't the best received game at the time because it did have some issues. Um, which were fixed eventually with updates, but there was people coming in uh, with like like N seven hats on and jackets, and people had armor <laughs> on and stuff like that, which I was really impressed with. And uh, yeah, it's most of the time you, it's it's a good night. <laughs> I remember when we were back in um, school. So I think GTA four came out when we were both in uh, last year in high school, I believe. Or it's, it might have been the year before. But there was all over the news about that game because that was like a big a big deal when that came out because you hadn't had a Grand Theft Auto game in a very long time. And um, somebody got stabbed in the queue. And that was, <laughs> that was um, I think it was at the Chafford Park one. Uh, Asda, was, it um, because, was it because he had the game and there wasn't a lot many copies? He got stabbed because he had the game. It wasn't. Like, yes, I think somebody had the game and then somebody wanted the game, so they stabbed him for the game. It's like, pff, how fucking bizarre do you want to do? Just throw yourself a good few years in prison for Fifth, a, a game, game which yeah, turned yeah. out to be not that good, to be honest with you. No, no, it had it. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, it wasn't as good as the other GTA games that I've played. It was, it was probably one of the worst ones out of him. Like, there was c- c- coming straight off the back of GTA San Andreas, yeah, yeah. like the most. I think personally the most best Grand Theft Auto game. I know GTA Five statistically is no, by well, far game gameplay and what San you Andreas. can do and and what's it in. I think with San Andreas, it doesn't get old playing it because it's fun. Where GTA Five, it's easy to replay. Isn't yeah, it? GTA yeah. Five. Once you played for it once or twice, you try and play the actual story and the gameplay. For a third time, it, there's nothing new. I can't even do it twice. Yeah, well, I can't. I've not. I finished it once, and I'm about halfway through it on the second try. So even even then, when I'm saying third try, even the second try is trying to get is getting to me. But for San Andreas, I've played that from start to finish a few different times, and it's quite relaxing to play. It's not like it doesn't tax me like GTA Five does. There's just something about it, though, isn't it? It's like even when you progress, like even the whole, you know, you start off obviously you're in the hood, the the grove, and um, you've got these connections with all the people, which come quite quick because you know he's he's moved out and he's come back and he's got all these people like flocking to him like family, and then you get it quite involved with that, and but it doesn't get stale because then straight away after that. <laughs> You go to the countryside and you think, oh, I'm in the countryside. But then you get the different radio stations come on every car that you go in, and that gives a whole new feel to I mean, it. Listening what to are we hey, in good now? looking, what have you got? Cooking? 2023. San Andreas came out in 2004, so it's nearly 20 years old, and people are still going on about it, and people are still like enjoy playing it. Where I don't think that's when, that's the same with other games. Regardless of what genre they're in, there's a lot of games that don't hold out for 20, 20 years that people still reinstall or put the disc back into play. Um, even, like I said, GTA Five. I don't think in, in 20 years people will be going on about GTA Five. In 20 years, we might even have GTA Six. We'll come into that, actually. I, I, did ha- I was going to put it on my notes, but I, di- I didn't do it because I was thought, oh, I, I don't know too much information on it to actually bother bringing it up. But Rockstar, I can't, I can't remember how this has come out. But well, basically, Rock, Rockstar are expecting 2025, uh, sorry, the periods between 
2024 and 2025 to be their biggest for the company yet. So, is that, so they must have one or two games. That's clearly out. GTA yeah. 6 is coming. But it's got to be GTA 6, sure. Like be... GTA 5 is obviously massive. Yeah, the amount yeah, of people yeah. that will I... literally probably stab someone for <laughs> GTA 6. <laughs> Proven facts. I mean, yeah. well, if it, that's still... If it comes out 2024, 2025, that's still a year from now, at least. And when did they announce it? About what? What well, from the thing I, I can't remember where I heard. I think it was on Spawn Wave. I don't know if you watched that. It's like a YouTube, um, a YouTube kind of news for gaming channels. <laughs> it's got a lot of gaming news anyway. But I'm pretty sure Rockstar predicting. 8.8 .8 billion increase in them um, that kind of those two years and that is just that's mad <sighs> that's silly money that isn't it <laughs> that's because Absolutely they think every insane. every person in the planet is gonna buy their game they will i'll buy it i'll buy it as soon as it comes out gt6 i will 100 percent buy it because uh, yeah the thing is with grand theft auto it does not disappoint it keeps like, done it you you get a grand theft auto game even if you Play like Grand Theft Auto Five. Right. I played it for a week. That's all I've played it for. It's a solid week. I completed it in the first week, but I loved it. I can't go back to and play it because I don't enjoy it that much. When I do that, I'm playing online. I don't personally enjoy. I it don't like that playing much. online not... either. But no, it's just not for me. Obviously, different strokes, different folks. That's why I'm but... hoping that with six, they concentrate or give more time to the the, the story as well as the online because with this one five was basically a decent story good gameplay but they threw loads and loads of money into the online bit it was a shame because like i said i completely i played it in a week and uh, i really liked the story i got dead into it and i was just i was over the moon and i played online for about a week when it was like really buggy and uh yeah it just put me off i just i couldn't get into it there was no there was no reward for me because I knew to get all the best things and stuff, you're not going to get them by doing missions. No, you, you're, you're going to get them by spending, spending your real world money. money. You buy shark cards. And and I, get, I, I'm not doing yeah, that. I didn't want to yeah. do that either. It was a similar situation with Red Dead Online as well, if we're staying on Rockstar Games. I played Red Dead Redemption 2. I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was really good. It was Loved immense. It. And the, just being in the work in that that time era in america you're going around on your horse and stuff like that really enjoyed myself so i thought Do you know what i'll play the online and see what it's like it took so long for your character to level up to be able to get anything good that people who were already playing it from the day one they were just taking you out because they knew they could and depending on what server you <laughs> went on it was full of people that just just wanted to oh, hurt you <laughs> i didn't want to get hurt <laughs> do 20 missions and you get a winchester Woo. <laughs> yeah <that's right. laughs> I, I, to be fair i didn't play that online much like i said the story i completed that and i loved it and uh, i'm a massive red dead fan anyway i've, I've read dead redemption one i oh, i loved it and um i was attached to john marston and i didn't I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't remember. I've, you have you played Red Dead Redemption 1 yeah. before I get into it? Have you completed it? Like, you yeah, know, yeah, I know the like story. I've done it, yeah. 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 Well, I, f I didn't realise that they said things about Dutch in um, the first one, because obviously I was playing now, it would have went right over my head, because it was years before. And just... It, the story. I don't know, seeing the, the whole story. I loved Dutch the whole way through. <laughs> I loved him. He was and a I, good even at the end, I was like... I, was, I, you know, like obviously when you kind of go against him, so I'm like, oh, it was breaking my heart, like that he, connection. He, I was like, he sat there. Don't do it, man. A... Why? Why are you being this? Because obviously, in the first, <sighs> as you said, in the first one, it sort of mentions him because two is a prequel. It's not a sequel, is it? it it's basically a prequel of what happened before. Yeah. And there's little bits in it where you think, God, this is really good. And Dutch is set there to be. A father figure to everybody in the camp he is there to look after everyone in the camp to make sure everyone he was a leader he was a true and, leader to be fair and even when you argue or have an issue with one of the other campers 
Dutch is there to sort it out and say, like, look, calm down, you do that, you go and do that, stop having, stop fighting with each other, like, we're supposed to be a family. And then he uses words like family and, like, stuff like that, so it, it makes you get connected to the characters. And like you said at the end, when, obviously, if you've not played it, this is a spoiler. Don't spoil too much. It's a spoiler, yeah. but like Mark <laughs> said, you, you, you have a bit of a... You have you have to go against him, and it, like it is heartbreaking because you spent the whole game being looked after this this character, being helping this character get the rest of the, the rest of the characters across America to be safe. Uh, yeah, it, it's mad. It was definitely one of the best like character developments in a in a game I've ever played. That I, the the attachment you feel, and obviously he is like a as a character, he's like a clear, clearly born leader. He makes the decisions no matter what and he's got to stick to his decision even if he makes the wrong decision sometimes you can tell like even in the cutscene and stuff he knows he's made the wrong decision afterwards but he's got to stick he with, stays it. with it but then yeah you, you have to and um yeah it's just a shame that it's a shame how the story went and i'm getting emotional talking about this now <laughs> you know what? let's move on <laughs> well i was gonna say let's move on just, just with like continuation in the games Right, like, without spoiling anything, you get to see how the main character of Red Redemption 1 got his scars, don't you, right? At the beginning of Red Redemption 2. Yeah. I think that was quite cool that they put that in there. I love that, yeah. I didn't put two and two together, but to be honest, when I was first playing it, it was like, John, John, where's John? Because it was like, John is a common name, yeah, yeah. especially for, like, in the Western time. Like, oh, it's just a proper cowboy name, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, let's see what else is on the news. As uh, as we've got, what have I wrote down here? Ah, Mortal Kombat. The, today, uh, recording this 18th of May, the trailer for Mortal Kombat 12 has just been announced, but it's not actually Mortal Kombat no, 12. They're, they're like resetting the timeline. <laughs> they're basically, they, they had 11, it's... they bring in 12 out to reset the timeline to bring out a new story. One thing I do like respect about them though is they've not just called it Mortal Kombat; they've called it Mortal Kombat One. So there, there technically isn't a Mortal Kombat One because the original Mortal Kombat would be Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's like when the Mortal Kombat Two, but, Mortal Kombat Three. It's what Battlefield did, didn't they? They went Battlefield, like Battlefield, Battlefield Two, Battlefield Three, blah blah blah, Battlefield Five, and then Battlefield One. Yeah, so that's, that looks interesting. I'll, I've got a little quote written down from the game. It says, uh, da, da, da. "the the game will introduce the game will introduce a reborn Mortal Kombat universe that has been created by the Fire God Liu Kang, featuring reimagined versions of iconic characters." So that's pretty much all we know about now. There's a, there is a trailer. There's like a two minute trailer of um, kind of just cinematics, yeah, no, yeah, no gameplay, gameplay or anything okay. like that. Um, but it's Mortal Kombat, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, really I've still to got expect. to play Eleven, to be fair. People have told me that Eleven's story is absolutely fantastic. Now, from what I understand, though, it does follow on from Mortal Kombat X's, which is Mortal Kombat 10 story. So, if you play 10 and 11, it's one long story. But... So, yeah, maybe... Uh, I've never been a massive fighting game kind of guy, though. I liked Mortal Kombat. I can play them every now and again, but Shaolin Monks on the PlayStation 2 was my best one because it was the co op I think we ground. played that one together, didn't we? Was it either you and me played probably. it together or I played it with someone else? It was you. Did one of you play as Liu Kang? I and probably played it with Kao you. Uh, and yeah, he had the special moves where he could throw his hat across the screen. It was it was a bit like. Um, it was a bit like that, that Star Wars game that you like where it, it was. Basically, the two, Jedi power battles, the two of yeah. you running around and fighting random like ads until you came to one of the boss named characters. Then it would go into a proper Mortal Kombat fight where it was two, well, not two D, but three D side to side. Couch co op games like that were the pinnacle of my childhood. I absolutely loved him. Um, because I, I well, I had Joel who lived close to me, and we used to he was kind of like my partner in playing all of these games the majority of times. And obviously, when I met you in high school, we kind of went like we started playing a lot of them games as yeah. well. Um, we, you were the first person <laughs> to mention now was you were the first person I finished Gears of War with. 
you and me used to gears of war one and <laughs> two in one night <laughs> well i was gonna say uh, terminator salvations oh, <laughs> that was a very unpopular game people won't like that but we we completed it i can't believe we and, completed um, it we sat there for all the loading yeah. screens <laughs> oh gosh i see i at the time when we're playing that for context for people watching i don't know if the game naturally had incredibly long loading screens <laughs> or it's because i had a modded xbox and the game was a modded disc so it was you know it was just a burnt disc and the loading screens took forever maybe maybe if you're actually playing on original xbox because you could install them to the console couldn't you back then Oh no! Actually, yeah, it was before it was that disc. we it was, played it. You put the disc in; it didn't install. Yeah. It it might have installed a little bit you, of something, but it didn't really install anything. You could install discs on Xbox 360, right? Uh, but it was a bit later on when it came out. You could install the disc, but you still have to have the disc in to play it. It just means it's got faster loading screens. How oh, did we? Did we? Because I do had that. to do my. <laughs> No, we didn't with that. I wish I wish we did. It must have been before it came out because I'm sure we'd have come up with that idea at some point. <laughs> but yeah, Terminator Salvation's loading screens were painful. Every time you died, there was a loading screen. It was about five to six minutes. Every time we went to a new not area. Exaggerating. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's not exaggerating at all. It was literally, we just lay there and just like for five minutes. And that's a long time when you're playing a game of waiting and doing nothing. It's, it's a long it's time for us equivalent. at the age we were on. Like, what were we? We were 14, 15. Like, just, we were in school. So we were 14, 15, waiting and waiting for a 15 year old. Five minutes just sat there in silence. Do you know how long that feels? It's so long. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. You literally just get to a loading screen, grab a drink, come back and still be on a loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> um, just some news on the... Da, 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 in the gaming world, actually. There's, um, on the 11th of June, there is an Xbox event at 6pm UK time. I don't know what the American times are or anything like that. But hopefully, me and you, Lewis, can, you know, do a do a podcast like special episode straight after that um so we can maybe watch it together and then we can kind of do oh, a, an episode right after it the, the 11th isn't it uh, yeah i believe that's sun, the first day the 11th of june is a sunday it's a sunday all right well we could probably we probably whack in, one yeah. out after no yeah uh, and there is a another conference which has just been announced which is coming up soon which is probably by the time this episode actually goes live, it might have already been gone now, so it's um, it's not as relevant because it's the 18th today, but this is the PlayStation are actually having a conference on the 24th of May at 9pm UK That's time. That's this time next week, isn't it? The um, 24th. This, the, this time next week? It, yeah, oh, when, Wednesday is the 24th. Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably mention some highlights on that on the next episode. There is... Um, this is the first event that they've done in like a year and a half because I, you know, everybody kind of like skipped E three this year and stuff like that. So it's nice to see that events are coming back. I know E three is dead now, but I do personally really like watching these events. I enjoy I used watching. Stay up it. watching the E three events. I mean, it was my job. I worked at Game, so if I didn't watch them, I'd be, I would be behind any of the customers that did what that did watch them, and that's that's not really good. But at least uh, I knew I was talking about. And it was nice to see all the, like, Phil Spencer used to get on stage and Takayama used to get on stage and go, this is what we've got. And it was really nice to to just see what everyone was bringing out. Yeah, the, the, obviously there's kind of stopping doing it because it was, clearly it was all, you know, it's all about our shareholders and stuff like that. That's what it initially was for. And then they released it to the public and turned it into like this big event where people would be going cosplaying and stuff like that but the expectations of the show because it was like a public event and the price they were charging uh, for entry and stuff like that obviously the expectations just couldn't really deliver what people were hoping for especially for like the money of paying and getting in there and, a lot and of such. people who might want you to go couldn't go either because it was always in la um 
And yeah, then obviously uh, we had the the outbreak that we shall not name. Um, that just shut all public events down. So that was really the killer for the for EA and um, and stuff. EA, not EA. <laughs> e three, <laughs> get him <laughs> <laughs> for E three. EA for, for it, it's for, in the COVID <laughs> for the <laughs> for the for the E three events that that they did. But I'm glad that they're still doing their own little showcase events. Like Nintendo will always have one every few months. Nintendo have a little showcase event. <laughs> um, yeah. And it, they should keep them up. They should. They should like. They should Xbox and PlayStation should keep doing them um, every year or whatever. Even if they get like a handful of developers on there and stuff, they only have to meet up. They don't have to have it open to the public and stuff. Like that. Just have it as a live event on YouTube or something. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what usually Nintendo have done. Or even pre-record it and then post it live. Um, yeah, it, it gives people that feeling that they're still there. It is good. I I quite enjoy them. Um, It'd be nice to see well, as for the place Xbox or PlayStation bring out or showcase something that we haven't seen yet as well. So, for example, when we we've got an expectation of what already is coming out, we want something new, like yeah, like last time there was That's... an event they shown us Last of Us Two. Now Last of Us Two's been. And I haven't really seen anything. There's not a new IP yet, I've not noticed. Have you? Well, Last of Us 2, I'm pretty no, I'm pretty sure it was pretty sure it was quite a while ago. There was, um There was the I remember the, the last one I watched live was in the lockdown. And from the only one I the game I remember from that was the Demon Souls remake. And that's been that's been and gone that. <sighs> yeah. Um, maybe the Last of Us Two, like you know, remaster or anything. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure Last of Us Two was PlayStation Four era. So I think that might have been the, the year before or so. But this year, they've obviously got the PlayStation VR Two, which is probably going to be quite a big focus on there. Which is a bit of a shame, really, because I don't really think many people care too much no, about VR. It's too it's, expensive. It's at the too moment. expensive. It's got ideals that I don't think it can hit because the PSVR one was I won't I won't say it's terrible because they it does have some fans, but compared to the other VRs that were out at the time, it was on the lower end of the scale. It was just it was for a PS4. It had cables running everywhere. Um, a lot of people, not a lot, of, uh, a lot of people's probably overstating it, but people were getting motion sickness because they were playing certain games where they didn't want to be running about. They wanted to be sat down, and because they were sat down but moving, they felt a bit funny. Well, from what I've from what I've gathered about the motion sickness, um, especially in the kind of older technology VR headsets, it's down to the frame rate the frame rate is slower than what your eyes are kind of anticipating ah, right. for what's so going that's on. What the motion sickness is. So you're that's expecting, why. So you're expecting something to happen and it yeah, doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so the higher-end headsets, um, like the Steam, I think it's called a Hive, and they're like a thousand pounds, and you've got the PSVR 2, um, which is on, a high, it is on the higher end. They apparently eliminate a lot of the motion sickness kind of aspects to it now well it came out in february so, the psvr2 like that's when it was released so hopefully now or when they sh they show this event they'll they'll put some actual games out there because a lot of it a lot of vr games are, are very they're very much either copies of games that are already out or they're very indie games, like they're gonna have to be though, aren't they? Because if you think, imagine, like, if you were as a developer, why would you make a game for VR? And if you were gonna make a game for VR, and if say that was your passion, you loved VR, and you wanted to kind of see it grow and stuff, you wouldn't make it console exclusive either. So it will be on all, it will be on PC because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know VR is already a very limited niche audience. So you, you, there's going to be like no exclusive games. So for PS5, you're going to be you're paying a lot of money for 
extra hardware, which apparently has good specs, uh, but there's no speakers in it. Um, you've you've so got, a, you've I've got to have a headset on top of your headset, or it's it comes with little earphones that go in your. Ear, they're, they're not going to be very good for something which is. I don't know how much it is. I'm, I'm just going to Google the price quickly. I think it's like five hundred quid. Uh, um, five hundred and forty-nine yes, dollars. Okay. Yeah, five hundred and fifty dollars. And, and for something you have to put in some little uh, pretty naff a, earphones. A certain retailer is selling it at five hundred and twenty-nine pound. So, a certain retailer. <laughs> oh, are we allowed to throw? <laughs> Names out? Are we doing that? Yeah, okay. you can put names there. Curry's <laughs> Curry's are selling it at five hundred and twenty nine pound. <laughs> Curry's are going to be like, you don't know. How dare you <laughs> speak about me? Hey, you never know. <laughs> I, can see, I can see you getting swatted right now. <laughs> well, yeah. So it's, you're looking at over five hundred pound for something that you may only use now and again. It's not going to be something you play on all the time. Yeah. It's a lot of money to play Beat Saber. That's exactly, that's the one I, uh, there's that I want to try. And I want to play there it. Are, well. There's a couple of like medieval style games that I would want to play on the VR. Like this, like the sword fighting ones and stuff like that, that I'd be quite interested in. Um, it's that games like that, this, like the sword fighting ones and stuff. I I would like to play them, and I think it's cool. There's a few shooters that look cool and fun to play, but they look kind of gimmicky. Like you play it for an hour, and then you'd be done, and then you might play it for an hour again a month later. Yeah, and then you'd yeah. be done. It's not. Whereas Beat Saber does look like a bit more of a Guitar Hero sort of thing, where you could probably, you know, you might go in it once a week and just, um, you know, play a few songs, kind of as exercise as well. To be fair, yeah, I've seen people, people play it, and I tell you what, they they sweating out. buckets when they finish, <laughs> depending on oh, what God, level yeah. they're playing it on. <laughs> Well, that looks good. Um, do, are you expecting anything to come out of this PlayStation conference? Is there anything you would? Obvi- I feel like Spider Man Two is obviously going to be there because that's Spider Spider Man Two will a... be on there. They, from what I remember, there was there was a plan for a Ghost of Tsushima Two. So whether that actually gets announced Ooh. at all this year, um, yeah, I'm hoping it does, and then. There's a horror game that um, what's it? I forgot. My mind's gone blank now. Um, Metal Gear Solid and Death Stranding. Kojima. Uh, yes, I was going to say something on that. Actually, there is rumours that Konami. Um, oh no, Kojima. Kojima. That's Kojima. The one. Is yeah, that yeah. Kojima. It was Konami. He was hired for, yeah. but he got fired. He, he's yeah. going to do his own. So he did Death Stranding by himself, um, but now there is a, or he has announced himself, but he hasn't announced like a game or what it's going to be on, a horror game that he is making himself as well. Like, a... Is it going to be Norman Reedus again? Oh. <laughs> <It's the best laughs> you never know. It's in every one of his games, isn't it? <laughs> the rest, but the um, I don't know where I've heard this from, I can't remember, but the, 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 there's a rumour that Konami might be saying something about Metal Gear. Uh, I I very much doubt that, and if it is, hopefully it's some form of remake. I doubt they'll ever make remake. I don't think they'll ever one, be a, I don't think they'll ever be a new Metal Gear game, because Kojima was sacked. Did it survive, didn't they? Kojima was yeah. done, and he basically made Metal Gear, because when they tried to do the end of five without him, well, I mean, we all know how that happened. We all know how that ended up. And then, like you said, they did survive and that didn't do very well at all. So hopefully if they are doing something new, it'll be either one, two or three redone for the PS5 where it'll rather, because one has a lot of bird's eye view in it, doesn't it? Um, where and yeah, the whole well, the whole, whole game, game is birds. I, I, I in, would um, like to play one and two as a newer generation game, where it's three D, it's more of an action game, and it's it's 
I don't know. Some, although to be fair, that would be interesting actually. If they can't, like, I I love them and I do like the birds. Have you um, from one and two? I do love that gameplay style, and that is like a core part of my childhood memories. But the, like the Resident Evil Four remake, for example, I would I would be over the moon if something like that was Metal Gear. I would buy it straight away. Yeah. I wouldn't even think twice. No, neither would I. I'd just buy it I, if they did it as a uh, like like you said. If they did it like the Resident Evil remakes, where they took a brilliant game and ramped it up to this generation's specs and graphics, changed the gameplay style slightly to match the this generation's. Modernized. Modern that, yeah. yeah. Imagine like going like on number uh, on number two going going through um going <laughs> going through the ship would be like oh oh god like go, going through all the all the ship at, on from number two that'd be quite good. As it when you fight the fat roller skate man and that chucks bombs at you. <laughs> that fight is well oh, yeah. stupid. Oh uh, yeah, his motto though is like my life motto. Laugh and grow fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be here. that that fight in this generation's graphics and specs. I think would be absolutely fantastic. Even if we got, even if we got a remake of one, two, and three, I absolutely loved Snake Eater, and I think playing Snake Eater in this generation's graphics and like modernize it would be great because it technically it, it is a PS2 game. It's it is a long yeah. long time ago. See, I love Kojima. I do. He's a bit mad. He's but a bit mad if... now. <laughs> oh, he's, I feel like he's always been a bit mad, really, because um, I feel like everybody overlooked the ending of Metal Gear Solid 2. Have you, have you ever got to the end of Metal Gear Solid 2? Uh, no, I think I was... When I was playing Metal Gear Solid 2, I wasn't... I wasn't as much of a gamer as I am now. I played it, but I was I wasn't in the same. As, I, I played it because I enjoyed it. I never finished games back then, unless I was really into it. Right. Well, the ending on that game was absolutely absurd. It was the I hate it. I really dislike it. It um, you get through and you do it all this thing, and it gets to the end. It's like, oh yeah, this this isn't real. This isn't reality. Oh, is it a simulator? And then, right. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, it's like everything's a simulator. It just starts tripping out, and then end of the discussion. <laughs> Game's over. It's kind of like, what's going on? So you don't know what's real and what's not real. And then, obviously, riding the main character you play as in Metal Gear Solid 2, he's not in Metal Gear Solid 3, because that's a different time period. And then Metal Gear Solid 4, Raiden is in there, and he does show up, and then you kind of think... Well, he's another oh, character, isn't he? Some of, well, that's what I mean. Some of the characters... Well, he's still riding, but some of the characters in Metal Gear Solid 4 were in Metal Gear Solid 2 and then you're kind of thinking what is real and what's not there's been absolutely you know what, no explanation you know, what I would like and I'm, there's probably YouTube videos of it but I'd want either a game or a proper explanation of a Metal Gear Solid timeline which snake which snake is which what is Raiden's proper character why is Ocelot hench in some games and absolutely weak in another game? I, I want. A... Yeah, I. To be honest with you, I I know a lot of that, and I could. I've got. I am very into Metal Gear, like the whole time. Like, that's why I was so disappointed in Metal Gear Solid Five, because the story of what I love, the bullshit. The <laughs> I don't know how to try not to kind the, of the, keep the... my language appropriate for this channel, but the um. The, not very the good. The story <laughs> is not there. It is just gone and it tricks you. Metal Gear Solid 5 is a trap. The first kind of mission where you're in the hospital and you wake up and there's flames going on everywhere. It's absolutely crawling great. Out of bed. It's the first couple of chapters that are actually yeah. really good and make you want to carry on and play. But then it gets to a certain and point. And then you just get into this sandbox. Yeah, and it's just... which is good. It's good gameplay. Gameplay is great, but the sandboxing, there's just no story, no structure, no nothing. It's just you're in the desert with the bad guys, and you just got to go around and do things. It's it's it sort of cuts. It's, yeah, it's like it, unlike other Metal Gear games, Solid Snake, and then they throw in a random sexy girl there to snipe people, and like right there you <laughs> go. The, Explain it, this yeah, one. <laughs> unlike the previous Metal Gear games, where from start to finish, it was. A long story, even even in three, which is the one I've played the most. You, it's a long story with a couple of the bits you, a couple of the maps where you go back to, but all the bad guys are in different places, 
and it explains why you have come back and what your objective is this time, rather than just you reusing the map. Like, yeah, it was a hard dynamics. The older games did seem that they were all they were more story than gameplay, whereas Metal Gear Five was more gameplay than story. Is, is <laughs> I it, just wish they had the perfect combination. Metal Gear Solid Four was. All cutscenes, only a tiny bit of gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was probably about twenty percent gameplay that game, but that, that it was still good. The, sto- the story made sense, and it. it was yeah, yeah, it was it. cracking, yeah. Um, and it does answer, it, yeah, it answered quite a lot within itself. Good game. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in this weird franchise. It'll, we'll see what yeah, happens. Hopefully, in this they, they do give us some remake. And then I might get the story more as well if I play the remakes. I might obviously you understand the whole story, or maybe not the whole story, but you understand. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I'll, I can fill you in on some of it. Um, Where, but it does get complicated <laughs> with bet. nano machines and all yeah, that. Yeah, because um, in three you go Metaclorians. <laughs> don't bring Star Wars into this now. <laughs> right, that's, um, that's good. Yeah, news. is there any more? Um, yeah, is, is there any games you'd be excited to see at the PlayStation conference? Um, or even the Xbox so conference, to be fair, because that's in June. With the Xbox conference, I'm not... Even though I prefer playing my Xbox, there's nothing really I'm expecting. The only thing that they could... No. The only thing that they could tell us about, really, is that they might give us another trailer for Starfield before it comes out, because it's out this year. Um, and they may give us another trailer for Elder Scrolls or the new Fallout IP I've read about. So they're making like a Fallout 5. So it's not Fallout 76 was the last game to come out, but that's all online. It's an MMO, yeah. and it didn't it didn't do well when it came out. Wasn't received well, was but it? But if you play it now, there's tons of downloadable content. It's made it a proper game again. Um, but there's supposed to be a new single-player Fallout game that has been in the news, so hope we might hear about that. Um, and obviously, we've been waiting for Elder Scrolls Six for a long time now, so we might hear more news on that. Otherwise, I can't really think what they would tell us about. Um, we might get an apology from about Redfall, <laughs> or there might be some downloadable content that they'll bring out for other games that are already out. Red Spot will be 60 frames per second starting from today. Something like that, yeah. And everyone's going to clap like it's some big, big achievement. Like, I mean, there was an event. There was an event. It was either last year or the year before where um, they said, obviously, Final Fantasy has been a PlayStation exclusive for a long time. And then suddenly, after, what, after some talks, Xbox came out in a showcase and said, right. Final Fantasy 1 to 7 and 8 and 9 are all going to be, and future possible games are going to be on Xbox as well. And then they did. They kept that. Then all the games, except for 14, because that's specifically online, um, came out on Xbox as downloadable content stuff. I was like, downloads. 7 Remake isn't on Xbox. 7 Remake is not. However, that was a timed exclusive, so you might get 7 Remake on Xbox soon. That might even be in the showcase. However, most people will have already played it on PlayStation. Just just kind of like, it's triggered a memory really on my... Because um, I've, not, I've, not, I've not really been on my Xbox game library in a while. Um, 7 is on there. Well, I believe Kingdom Hearts... Three is on there, which is you know it's a similar kind of thing as two Final Fantasies in the same sort of. All of the Kingdom Hearts games degree. are now on Xbox. Right. Okay. So, all of them. So are. you can buy. Last time I checked, it was just free. You can buy Chapter Two Point Eight and One Point Five. You know them sort of remakey ones right. they did to finish the story off. You can get them all on Xbox now. Um, right. Okay. Um, That's what I was going to ask you, in case if you knew. I they're they they're on there because I thought about getting them and then remembered I can't play Kingdom Hearts very well. I want to, but the story is so contrived; it's worse than Metal Gear Solid, and I really don't want to get myself into that. Yeah, this <laughs> story is pretty nasty. Um, um... Where all the original Final <laughs> Fantasy games are on Xbox now, up to. 
15, obviously 15, except for 14, because that's specifically online. Um, 16 is only going to come out on PlayStation, but there's it, it, there's, there's nowhere to say it's going to be a timed exclusive, but I think it will be because of the other Final Fantasy games all coming to Xbox yeah. at some point. Oh, I'll tell you what you might get a trailer for at the PlayStation 1. The next Final Fantasy remake part, part 2. Oh, yeah, I suppose. But other than that, I'm mm. not too sure. Yeah, it's still. I'm hoping they did kind of just pull out something new on both sides. To be fair, on PlayStation and Xbox, that's what I yeah. they just whip Everything... out this miracle game they've been working on in the silent. That yeah, you know, they, they want something new that no one's new. expecting. Like I don't know, something that we won't get. We... That, well, with journalism these days, like games are announced like four years before there's even a trailer that like, everyone knows yeah there's a People there's leaks and all everything. sorts isn't there, that says like this will be out soon or this will be announced at such and such a thing yeah where well I'm, I'm just hoping that we get something that's not another call of duty game or another this or another that or question mark number two i, I want something brand new like the last time i played something brand new and really enjoyed it was Ghost of Tsushima. It was something that was by itself, on its own, didn't have a number two. It was just, this is our brand new game. This is what you're expecting. And it was brilliant. <laughs> well, I finally got my PlayStation 5. I mean, I saw, um, I've been playing that a little bit. Uh, I, I'm, you know, making my way through it slowly, but I am really, really enjoying that game. It does... It does a lot. <laughs> I get, I can't and not do like side missions and stuff. Like I'll start doing a story for somebody, and once I've started doing a mission for one person, I tend to commit to that person. I have to only do their missions until do their little yeah, arc yeah, yeah, yeah. is currently done. Um, it's it is very. I know it's a very good game, and a Ghost of Tsushima two would be a massive because obviously game. I won't spoil anything because you are playing it. But the way it ends, they could they could easily have like they could carry it on if they want to. It's not like right. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'll leave you to play it and get to the end of it. Um, but yeah, when they, when you finish it, you could there could easily be a continuation or a new story that they could bring out. Mm. Mm, yes, I've I've not. Um... I've not checked into this properly, actually, and I won't go too, in, too into it too much on the podcast. You don't want to bore people to death because people probably already know this. But is it's online, isn't it? Ghost of Tsushima now. It's been online for a while. It's been online, mode. yeah. It's been online for a while. Um, it's called Legends, and you can. So can we samurai up? Together? We can samurai up together. Yes. So um, play it later if you want. I'll, I'll boot up the PS5. Um, I'll add you on PS5 if I not already have. And they basically, um, it's it's co-op through separate missions, so it's not got anything to do with the story, but it has its own sort right. of multiplayer. It's like a, it's a multiplayer story. Bit of like of a. Do you remember when we did the shooty one, Vegas? When we did Vegas co-op, and it was sort of they had Vegas. New Vegas. No, I've never did oh, it. Yeah. All right. It wasn't me. All right, okay. I must have played it with someone else. But basically, the, the way it works... It's been your other podcast times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when, basically, you, you, my, your character levels up as you go through and the more people you kill. And on the harder, difficult, the harder difficulties you do it, the more experience you earn. But it's a bit like a wave game. You go through the levels, beat the waves that are at whatever the objective is. Um, and you go through with like a narration on what's going on or there's right, okay. a sort of like an arena thing where you pick the arena and there's seven different places seven different flags basically and you have to defend the flags from all the enemies that are coming in on the on up to 15 waves now that one is up to six people um, and the story one is three people, I think, but I just played it with two. I don't have that many friends. 
All right. <laughs> nice. Cool, we'll have to try that out at some point. Um, I don't know if I've got too much more on my notes for this episode. I've got one thing actually written down was um, Days Gone, the 2019 zombie game, oh, like the motorbike yeah, style yeah. one. That's getting like a, a surprising amount of um, press recently with fans considering it as one of the best games in years. I, just after so long after its release date, it's now turned into a thing where people are actually appreciating it more rather than the negative views that people had on it when it first came out. Have you played Days Gone? I did. I didn't finish it because I, I did play it and I get... If I gave it more time, I probably would have liked it, but I did... I. I stopped playing it after... I gave it a good few hours, though. It wasn't like I just turned it on and thought, oh, I don't like this. Um, I think I'm at other set. I've done the same thing as you. You did by the sound because of it, so it, far, anyway. Cause... I got to the point where my bike's been nicked and it was been broken down and I have to, they give me a brand new bike that's not brand new at all. I, it's, it's naff. Um, and you basically, that's from where you start the real game, where you go off and do your own thing and start doing quests and stuff. But I think it was, it was so, usually with games like that, I can sit through it. Like you're playing Ghost of Tsushima now. Do you feel like it's a slow burner? Like, or do you think you can just go through it I do, to be honest. I feel, I, I can play it. Um, it will take me a while to play it though. So with yeah. Days Gone, I felt that was because you didn't even move fast. You sort of like about it was it was slow. I I feel the same way. As the, I can't even exp- like you're saying it better than I could even. Um, it was express so the game, but there was just something about it. Yeah, the, I when I played it and I when I first got it and I put it on, and I was quite captivated and. You know, when when you're walking through your first tunnels and it's nighttime and stuff, and I'm there checking every corner with my torch and stuff, just a bit scared, to be honest. <laughs> like, because when you are at the nighttime and you, you just want to be ready to kill anything, you see. I think it got very repetitive as well with the waves of zombies that started coming after you. And I just thought, <clears throat> I'm to a point in the game now, I have stuff to do that I need to get done. But the game is just like, yeah, you haven't fought a wave of zombies in a while. Here you go. And I was just like, hang on a minute. <laughs> There's no need for like this to happen. Yeah. Like, it's not like some other zombie games. Like when we played uh, even Back for Blood, we set the zombie hordes <laughs> off. We shot crows. Or yeah, you make it worse. You make it worse. Yeah. Where in Days Gone, there was... They, I felt like they just appeared for no reason. Sometimes they were just there. I didn't do anything to set them off. I was just going down the road, looking for a building. And the next thing is, they're a load of zombies. And I never understood why. And I just got bored of the repetitiveness of it. They were using it as a gimmick by the end of it. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of see what you mean there. They were a bit. They were quite ferocious as well. The zombies. Uh, so, like in most zombie games, you know where where you are exploring, there is a zombie there. If you don't want to deal with him, you don't deal with him. You just kind of get away from him. Like, oh, sorry, I'll walk away and do this. But on that, they are proper on you. They're fast. They're running at you, and you're like, oh, fine, I'll kill you. Then you spend five to ten minutes fighting these zombies to look into a house with nothing there, and you're like, well, that was pointless. I've wasted my time there. And like, then the human enemies were even worse. The time. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap this episode up, is there anything you, um, any topics you want to discuss about? Are we all good for this episode? Um, I think I'll save my voice for next episode and we'll chat about, or I'll tell you about Zelda <laughs> a little bit after I get it this weekend. Oh. I'll play the first, hopefully I'll play the first couple of hours and be able to tell you a bit about that. Well, what is the date actually on the next episode? Well, Next episode is the Thursday, but on the first, well, we normally record on Thursday, so we're going to have to record the next episode most likely on the Friday, because we are going to format launch party. Oh, that's next. That's this Manchester, time next week, isn't we? it? 
Yeah, um, so that, that should be we good. We can chat about that then. Now That's the a big next, kind of games episode. event. Yeah, so that'll be quite interesting, see if anything good comes out of that. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy this podcast, anybody, please give it a like, thumbs up, follow, subscribe, just five-star rating on whatever platform you're listening to or watching the video version on. The video version will be exclusive to my YouTube channel, which is Modern Tech, and everything else will be on all your major podcast platforms, such as Spotify, Apple Music, just the whole shebang. Well, if it's not there, let us know in any comments and what it is, and I will try my hardest to get it onto the platform that you listen listening to. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will leave it there. Goodbye.